All right, on to the next one. Uh, well, now we're on to talking about a uh, Excelio XIO integration with kernel RBD client for RDMA support. Raju is uh, online with video. Excellent. So, uh, Raju, you want to tell us a little bit about your blueprint here and uh, what's going on? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Patrick. Uh, um, so, I've been working on the XIO messenger uh, on the kernel side for some time now. Um, in the hammer release, the Ceph side XIO messenger was merged. And so the only piece that, a piece that is missing is the kernel side client. <clears throat> so the the change that I've been working on is to have the uh, kern, uh, a new kernel side XIO messenger that can talk to a Ceph cluster that, ha that is listening on XIO messenger. Uh, the current uh, kernel client uses a kernel based socket mechanism to talk to a self cluster. So, uh, other than the XIO messenger change, I, ha I made some changes in the uh, on the current kernel messenger side. Uh, the the main change is to uh, add support for uh, <coughs> loading. Um, new messengers dynamically um, and so uh, whenever there's a new messenger it would just register with the current uh, messenger uh, with, a, with a unique name and a set of interfaces and uh, so some of these interfaces are uh, to open a new connection close connections send messages send keep alive messages and uh, cancel uh, messages um, so these interfaces would be registered on at the messenger layer and when uh, uh, an RBD image is mapped, a user, I have added a new option for the user to specify what sort of a messenger to use for that map request. And based on that mapping, the messenger layer would uh, you know, go through the list of registered messenger, pick up the correct one and use that. <coughs> so, um, and what I've done is I've made the existing TCP socket based messenger as the default. So when, when, when the Ceph messenger comes up, it would automatically register this one and everybody else would have to have, have some loadable module, which when they load would go ahead and register themselves. Uh, so the new option that I have added for mapping is MS type where which you can specify the messenger name. Um, in addition, there have been <clears throat> some minor changes to the Ceph message and the Ceph connection structures to uh, take some additional parameters, which are uh, like messenger private data structures. <clears throat> and uh, so the RBD, the the Ceph side is uh, there's a minor change in the RBD CLI to parse the new. Uh, option for the map, option that is uh, used while mapping and uh, the the kernel side xio messenger is pretty straightforward uh, it is mostly just mapping the ceph side request to the xio side request uh, so uh, an uh, open connection from the ceph would result on a uh, xio connection start and uh, similarly, uh, a send message from Ceph would result in uh, a, a chain of XIO messages that are sent uh, uh, using the XIO interfaces, uh, so forth. Um, and sorry, one, one question. One question before you. Yeah. Before you Actually, this is about the um, when you were saying that the the messenger. Obviously, there's the existing TCP implementation, and then there's the XIO one. When you said it's yeah. a loadable module, do you mean it's like it's a separate kernel module that's dynamically loaded, or do you mean yeah. just that, that there's a switch that instantiates either a different implementation of the same messenger interface? Uh, so uh, uh, the currently I've implemented it as a as a dynamically loadable module. So the reason being that this module depends on two other modules that are part of the Axel IO um, uh, code. So there is two other modules that needs to be loaded prior to this. So, okay. so uh, you know, they have a whole bunch of dependencies. So I made it a dynamic module. So 
and that the, my module depends on those two modules and as long as they are loaded you just have to load this module it would go ahead and register itself as a messenger and then you mm -hmm. pass it in the map and starts using the new messenger okay so you must have in there must have been a bunch of initial work to just take the current messenger and like rename it Ceph TCP messenger or something and to like make a generic interface around it so, yeah so is that right? yeah so some some of those functions that um, that the osd client or the mon client in the kernel makes they, they make mm -hmm. some uh, you know messenger calls they kind of assume mm -hmm. that they are just talking to a you know tcp yeah. uh, kind of yeah. an interface so some of those i had to refactor move some code into tcp specific functions and uh, okay and okay and that, that that messenger is registered by default so mm -hmm. and new new ones just keep getting added to that okay okay so, have these have the have the patches for this been posted anywhere no uh, i am in the process of cleaning it up and probably in a couple of weeks i would start sending out the okay. kernel patches for review so the code is, i have a working prototype and mm -hmm. I, I should start testing the performance very soon Okay. Um, all, all, all the RBD functions have been tested, and I plan to do some some very basic FFS tests as well using this. Cool. So yeah, I did. I think that I mean, the, so, as as always, the 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 first step is to look at the ones that are refactoring the interface to just isolate the um the TCP stuff and behind a nice clean interface. Um, yeah. And so as soon as those are ready, feel free to post them and we can make sure that that makes sense before getting too far okay. down the road. But yeah. 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 So, and um, so there's, there's a, like, like I mentioned, there's a small RBD CLI change as well. It's like a two liner, mm -hmm. which just, yeah, yeah. You know, just makes sure that that particular That's option, option goes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and, sense. and there is some, some um, performance, uh, investigations that we are doing on the xio side so currently xio kind of mandates a one kernel thread for every connection so that i i don't know how well that scales so we are actually investigating to see if we can use work use in the kernel side to to avoid the overhead of kernel threads i see and that's and that's sorry the for, for xio is this is it sort of taking the user space code and transplanting it into user space, or is it a re-implementation of the same library in kernel? So they have uh, mo most of the changes are identical to the user space code, but some of these things, like you know how how new messages or how asynchronous events are handled, is kind of different and yeah, it's more kernel space. Okay. Okay. And so the. Uh, some of the thing is currently we don't support uh, you know mixed cl clusters like you can't have some yeah. some nodes in the cluster running TCP and others running XIO. Yeah. And, and that's that's Seth's fault. <laughs> no, definitely not your fault. <laughs> we need to figure out a we need to figure out a um how we want to mark the the addresses so that you can tell what type of address it is. And then also yeah. make it so that um, ideally make it so that you can have multiple endpoints for different. I guess that's a separate problem, but so you can have multi-protocol support. But yeah, that, that's yeah. all. For now, so, it's just uh, you can have a, a, yeah. yeah. On a related note, the the there is a dependency from the client which says that at least the IP address for the monitor should be running on an XIO interface. The, mm -hmm. the 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 mon address that we put in the cefcon for the rbd cli to use yeah. it needs to be running so that i think we may need to put an option over there that says that this interface is actually a xio interface or currently it's just an ip mm -hmm. address and i assume that that is running on an xio interface but there's no way for the client to know that so, yeah. So, uh, well, if, I think we've talked about this um, maybe two CDSs ago, um, but there are there are fields in the um, entity adder T in the address structure that aren't really used for anything that are always type one or something that we we could actually just 
rev that type. So type two is XIO. And then the rest of the structure is the same. It's an IP address, but then you can tell it's an XIO IP and not a TCP IP. Um, okay. Okay. That might be yeah. the but, the next step, but but what, what do we I do for, for the now first we, connection? For now we don't. Well, you would for know. The first like, connection. Oh uh, yeah, you would because you're actually taking it from a an IP. You probably just yeah, make the monitor one. Like a, yeah. You could just make the monitor one a regular TCP one just by default, unless yeah. there's some special option. Um, but then right, when you right. get like the OSD map or something, all the addresses you you can tell whether it's a an XIO IP yeah. or a regular TCP IP. Yeah, yeah. Um, I go from there. Um, but I think that's that's probably something that would have to happen in the either for Infernalis or for we could do for Infernalis if we wanted to, or for J. Okay. Whatever that is. Um, there's like a there's an old branch that's sort of half done that that tries to t solve both that problem and the problem where um, you can have either a single IP or a set of IPs. So you could have um, an OSD listening on both types of interfaces at the same time. Right, right, yeah. But it's, um, it's like, it didn't build because it never finished it, but it also needs to be rebased. Um, so that, that's sort of, a, sort of a tedious project, but at some point we'll want to tackle. Okay. Um, when we have sort of already my support in there. Yeah, okay. How 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 close is this to to is it is it working? <laughs> yeah. Um, and you, but it's not performance sensitive. It's like basic I/O works. Yeah, yeah. All all the basic I/O works and all the RBD operations, the cloning, snapshotting, all that works. Um, awesome. So the only thing that I haven't tested is in none of the CFFS related tests. Um, yeah. So that I mean that the, the I guess it, it all sort of falls in the category of all the failure handling. Um, and I'm actually not sure what state that's in on the on the user space side either, um, mm -hmm. but that's the main place where you'll see that it's different with CFFS versus um, the OSDs. So on the OSDs, if you lose a connection, it just you forget everything, you reopen a new connection, and you resend everything that hasn't been act yet. On the MDS right. sessions, there's all this complicated state with sequence numbers that like preserve the ordering and flow of messages in both directions. Okay. Um, so it'll be more complicated there. So I would probably focus just on the RBD case and make sure all the okay. failure handling stuff works because that's going to be more important to get this actually in users' hands and then okay. worry about the um, the reconnect behavior later. Okay. Um, although the same problem has to be solved on the um, on the uh, OS, on the server side, on the user space side for the OST to OST mm -hmm. traffic. They also have to do right. that negotiation reconnect ah, stuff up too. Oh. Um, maybe it might actually be a non-issue because maybe XIO is sort of connectionless and you don't right. have like yeah. like most it's all it's all about dealing with a TCP connection dropping and reconnecting and right. tolerating that. But if yeah if you just I don't know. I don't know how the fabric fails. So <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Presumably it does. That, that's at some point. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I inter I, inter I interrupted you while you were going through your list. Um, I actually that's about what I had. Um, so uh, in, I think in a couple of weeks, once I clean up the code and do some testing, I'll send it out for review on the, on the list. Okay. And okay. Take it from there. Okay. Is is the plan to so that this this has a bunch of dependencies like lib xio whatever that are going into probably like net. Net XIO or something on the kernel tree, is that right? Uh, net. So yeah, that's another thing. So because it's a loadable module, I am not sure where to put it. Um, whether yeah. it should be a you know a sub of the existing net or... So the the what what we want to aim for and what hopefully will happen is that um, lib XIO gets merged in its own right as a as a library available to any kernel user, and Ceph is, you know, initially the only kernel user. And right. given that it's a network protocol, effectively, it presumably goes in should go in net XIO. Would be my guess. Um, okay. It's not it's not really a driver. It doesn't. Um, it'll sit on top of any 
ID verbs driver mm -hmm. right. or independent band driver, right? Um, yeah. So I mean, ultimately, we want this to go upstream into the mainline Linux kernel. And the way to make that happen, I think, is right. to make sure that the is to have a set of patches that cleanly add, you know, um, libxio or, or whatever it is um, as a yeah. generic kernel module that's in the tree, and then also and then have Ceph have an option that enables XAO support that depends on that with all the module, all mm -hmm. the stuff in the cave, cave build files or whatever to make that work. Um, that's that's the yeah. form that it should be in in order to go in order to go upstream. Um, mm -hmm. While we're waiting for that to happen, you know, dynamically loading the module or whatever. Um, Yeah, no. It's you it really should just structure. You really should just try to structure the kernel source that way and the patch it that way. Um, and maybe that module gets okay. distributed out of tree. But but the the end goal should be to make this go all the way upstream. So okay. Um, yeah. I don't know what the what the I'm not sure what the path would be. I don't know if it goes through the network subtree or since Ceph is the only user, maybe we'd go through the Ceph tree. Um, but it would probably need an ACK from the network mm -hmm. guys or something. But um, it might be when you when you post this code, you should also post the the patches that actually just add XIO itself to the tree because those will all, those will eventually need to be um, approved yeah. and act. I I think I'll need to talk to the Melnox yeah. guys on that. Yeah. So the XIO okay. is handled by Melnox, so I think we will need to yeah. sync up with them yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But. I assume slash hope that this is the this is the plan, <laughs> right? Because I think that's that's going to be okay. the it's going to be the win for everyone, right? But um, uh, are they planning to actually push it into the kernel, or is it going to be us? Um, trying that's to push what, yeah, that's what, I don't know. I think I think they're going to have to. I think we can help make sure they sort of follow the right process, but ultimately they're going to have to do some of the they're going to be the ones maintaining it right so um they'll need to be involved so maybe we need to have a separate conversation with them and make sure they have they're doing it in the right fashion i suspect that if they just tried to merge it nobody would want it because there's no user so yeah we are going so to be we'll the be we're going to be the user so it's going to be it's going to go in as part of stuff supporting it um but at the very my guess is that it would Probably just it's simpler just to go in through the Ceph tree, but it needs an ACK from the network maintainers so that they will have reviewed yeah. it and sort of say, yes, we understand so just, it's coming. The, and this uh, is the point of it is that so it can be a single series, but the patches have to be clearly separated, like the first, say, five or 10 patches is the XAO and then um, yeah. the rest yeah. is Ceph. So, yeah, so there has to be a clean separation. Yep. Um, cool. Okay. Well, um, Raju, I don't know who, I actually don't know who it is on the, I don't know if it's Vu who is leading that effort on from Melnox or if it's somebody else. Um, yeah, I, I, th I think we can start with Vu. Uh, he's... Okay. He's not on. Um, but yeah, okay. So I'll ping him and make sure. Okay. Cool. Cool. Is that everything? Sounds great. One? I had a quick question. So in the blueprint, there is an item that says uh, refactor kernel messenger, current messenger to function in a request response fashion. What exactly is meant by that? So uh, XIO has an option where, you know, you can send a request and th they have a request response kind of a mechanism, message mechanism. Uh, but the current Ceph uh, XIO messenger doesn't support that, so it it works in like a one-way send message fashion. So mm -hmm. this was, you know, when I when I had written this, they they had support for that, but right now the kernel the Ceph messenger doesn't support that. So it is just one way. The request and response both are one-way messages currently. I think so that's. I mean, that's. You haven't actually refactored it to do that, right? No, I haven't. I I can I can correct the blueprint too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah. I, I'm not I'm not sure that we actually want to do that because I because even when even when we're doing things in a request response like pattern, 
we don't always get the reply because there's usually some other thing that can happen that makes both the client and the server realize that the reply isn't needed and so they just don't bother. Um, okay. So I'm pretty sure that the way that the XIO, the user space XIO messenger is implemented is also in this one way, just message passing yeah. fashion. Right. Um, and so we just we just don't use the the special request reply XIO yeah. capability. Um, yeah. So I guess in, in, in your case, I wouldn't worry about it until there's sort of a an overall strategy that we want to somehow change things around to take advantage of it. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. Bring us Thanks to the end lot. of this one here. Yeah. We're only five minutes behind now. Awesome. Mm -hmm.